About a third of Launceston's residents live in the northern suburbs. That's about 20,000 people in Ravenswood, Waverley, Rochelle, Mowbray, Mayfield, Invermay and Newnham. Tonight we begin three nights of coverage from those areas, looking at services, transport and families. Monika Champ joins us live from Ravenswood. Monika, what have you got in store for us? Well, good evening, Guy. There are thousands of people waiting in Tasmania for public housing, and the northern suburbs is no exception. Vacant blocks here at Ravenswood and in Rochelle have been flagged as potentially available for social housing. But there are concerns that how housing will own more housing will only work if there's more shops and services to go with them. But as Ellen Coulter reports, more homes could also make local business and infrastructure more viable. It's a beautiful, beautiful place and um, I think if it wasn't housing estate it would be worth a whole heap of money because it's just a beautiful spot. Despite the pretty landscape, stigma has followed the suburb of Ravenswood decades after it was subdivided for public housing. It definitely gets a bad rap and um, I think it's so unjustified. We've got a couple of people in a larger community um, that get all the recognition, which is, you know, a, a real shame because this is the most connected, giving community I've ever lived in. For many, the heart of Ravenswood is its neighbourhood house. Nettie Burr is the manager. Hi, ladies. Hi. Her role is part-time. Almost everyone else is a volunteer. Everyone is welcome for lunch, classes or a chat. A resident of 42 years, Jackie Beams, regularly pops in. Her home in the subdivision was basically brand new when she moved in. Every time there's something on the news, it's from the troubled suburb of Ravenswood. And I mean, 95% of the people here are brilliant. Eight kilometres away, Rocha Lee has experienced similar reputational damage. It was the last broad acre housing development in Tasmania at the time, so that was established in the 1980s. But it was 400 homes put out on the fringe with nothing else around it, except for the neighbourhood house. Denise Delphin is about to retire as general manager of the Northern Suburbs Community Centre. She was one of Rocha Lee's early residents. There was lack of transport one shop and I think there's still one shop so when you put a whole lot of people um, out in an area where there is nothing around to support it um, that can create challenges for any community. Rocha Lee is now established with a football club, community shared hotel and takeaway shop but there's no supermarket, the nearest GPs are in Mowbray and bus transport is patchy. Down the hill to Mowbray is a lot, can be a long way if you um, don't have that opportunity to access transport. In the past few decades, Tasmanian governments have moved away from broadacre social housing, stipulating that new properties need reasonable access to jobs, shops, transport and schools. New homes could soon be added to both Rochelle and Ravenswood. A recent Expressions of Interest process identified more than 40 vacant lots of land in Rocha Lee and 13 in Ravenswood that could be made available for social housing. Broad acreage housing estates haven't worked previously and, and, um, and in some ways I think it's an easy way out for the government. There's no denying Tasmania needs more public housing. The most recent data showed more than 3,300 individuals and families were on Tasmania's public housing wait list. It takes about 63 weeks or about 15 months for priority applicants to be housed. Some of the greatest demand is in Launceston. Housing Tasmania is the state's public housing manager, but Community Housing Limited manages about 1,200 homes in the northern suburbs. Many people looking for social or community housing in the northern suburbs already live in the area. They would either be in accommodation which they cannot afford, or they would be in accommodation where they're sharing or perhaps couch surfing, um, and maybe staying with relatives, and, and that brings other pressures onto them. The organisation employs mostly local residents, offers some traineeships and supports the Ravenswood Community Garden and other projects. 
State Manager Oscar Norton believes more homes can create the critical mass needed for more businesses and infrastructure. If you don't have enough people to warrant the, the shop, then the people who are living there have to travel into town. The state government says developments around the country have shown that as communities grow, retail, health and services also expand. Kelly Leary has lived in Ravenswood on and off since she was 16. This area is pretty, pretty quiet. Um, it's actually nice, yeah. She thinks more housing could be good for the area. It'd be good like for the shops and that down here already. Yeah, because some of them have shut down and that mm, because there hasn't been enough clientele. But it's not up to housing managers to supply shops and services. Housing doesn't have the authority or the scope or the mandate to do it all. Other agencies need to step in and provide those services and they need to be resourced to do so. Housing expert Kathleen Flanagan says it's poor practice to pursue any kind of housing development in areas without adequate services. But Housing Tasmania already owns land in the northern suburbs, bringing down the cost of potential development and rent. So there's a whole range of reasons why they're choosing these sites. But it is a concern if that development isn't backed up with additional services. The Launceston City deal includes a plan to boost employment, education and health outcomes in the northern suburbs, growing a brighter future for the next generation. Ellen Coulter, ABC News. And as well as the Launceston City Deal, charitable organisations are also creating future opportunities for the northern suburbs. I'm joined now by Hugh McKenzie, who is a city councillor, but tonight is joining us with his Cape Hope Foundation hat on. Now, Hugh, your foundation has been working on new opportunities for young people. What does that involve? Look, over the past four years we've been working with Community Housing Limited to provide scholarships to young people in the northern suburbs, primarily those that come out of community housing. Uh, we provide academic, uh, social, uh, sorry, academic uh, sporting and cultural scholarships and really it's just been a fantastic opportunity for those people who might not otherwise been able to advance their, their, their circumstance and we've done that in, uh, by assisting young, one young man to go to Melbourne or go to Geelong actually to, to, to further his uh, further education. And Ricky Ponting and Daniel Gill helped with those scholarships. Yes, they did, yeah. And Hugh, you're also the new president of the Northern Suburbs Community Centre. What goals does the centre have towards uh, have with working to, with community members? Well, I guess I'll just focus on food security. I know you've been talking about the, uh, the community gardens during the course of the week, but I guess that we see them as very fundamental to teaching people how to grow food and we're teaching them to grow them in their own backyards uh, as well as teaching people to eat better. So we think that's fantastic and we're trying to grow more of those. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Hugh. That was Hugh McKenzie, who is president of the Northern Suburbs Community Centre and also 